In this video, I'm going to show you how you can manage your Trezor hardware wallet and portfolio with the new Trezor Suite. Welcome to Everybet Helps. I hope you find today's video useful, and if you do, then please give it a like and share. Plus, for the latest information on Trezor, please check out everybethelps.co.uk. If you're serious about crypto, you need to remove your crypto from an exchange and store your crypto assets offline where you'll have access to your private keys. One of the most popular and best ways to do this is by using a hardware wallet, with one of the most popular devices being the Trezor hardware wallet. Up until now, one of the downfalls with Trezor was managing your device. And in the past, I personally used to access my Trezor wallet in conjunction with Exodus which also had limitations in relation to the management of my device. But now, Trezor has released the Trezor Suite. And although it's only in public beta at the time of this recording, users of Trezor hardware devices can now download and test the desktop app. Trezor Suite is a new workplace where you can manage your hardware device and portfolio at once. The Trezor Suite has been designed to make it easier for Trezor users to use their devices to their full potential. Plus it now has enhanced security and privacy with Tor integration. And it's available as both a desktop standalone program to install onto your computer and as a browser app. Now I'll be showing you around the desktop program today. However, you will find that the web version is very similar, although it does lack some features such as the Tor switch. And just be aware that this version of Trezor Suite is still in beta and bugs are to be expected. But don't worry, as this won't affect your crypto. The public beta is expected to run until January of 2021, when a new version of the desktop wallet will be available for download and Trezor Wallet will no longer be available. The browser-based Trezor Wallet will continue to work while the public beta is underway and will eventually redirect users to the Trezor Suite web wallet. And the version I'm using today may appear slightly different to yours as new releases and features are added to the suite. If you don't already have a Trezor device, then I've got a link in the summary below that will give you access to some of their up and coming Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. So let's jump into it. And to get started, you'll need to download the Trezor Suite which is available on a landing page at the moment, as opposed to the full site. And I'll pop a link in the summary below for that. And I'm installing the desktop app onto my Mac today. However, you do have options for above Windows 8 and for Linux too. Then you'll have the option to either begin your setup and create a new wallet or restore one, or simply access the suite. And once you've got your Trezor connected, you'll then reach the dashboard. And it will show you the name of your connected wallet in the left-hand side of the screen here. We're currently on the dashboard tab, but you can toggle across to accounts, which we'll come back to shortly. Any notifications will appear under this bell icon. You have your settings, whether or not you wanna make your values appear on screen or not, and mine's currently hidden as you can see with it currently being grayed out. And then finally, there's tour mode, which I'm gonna explain in a moment. And from the dashboard, you'll be able to track your portfolio over time, and you can make changes to the time periods in here too. Your assets will appear in the list here, along with your balance in the specified asset and also in dollars. Plus you can enable more coins. Then next, you have your security section, where you can manage your device's security by checking your seed and backup. You can change your pin settings, enable passphrase, which allows you to create hidden wallets. Plus you can also enable discrete mode from here too, which is the same option as that eye icon in the top right hand side of the screen. And there's some news at the bottom here, which will link to the Medium articles. And it's worth checking these out, as well as their Twitter feed, to find out about new releases and features in the suite. Now if we click onto accounts at the top here, this is where you can view your accounts which correspond to your crypto, 
and you can add further accounts from here too, or you can simply search. And for each account that you have, you can view an overview, and that will show you the performance of that particular asset or account. You can view the transactions broken down here by incoming, outgoing, and then you can view each transaction by date too. You can retrieve your receive address by confirming on your device, which will then display both on your device and your screen, along with the corresponding QR code. Then underneath, it will display a list of any transactions that have been sent to that specific address. Like with any wallet, you can also send by adding in the address where you'd like to send your funds to, entering in the amount, which again will then show in your selected cryptocurrency and US dollars too. Then there's a host of different fees that range from low to high and custom, where you can specify the fee and the time that is estimated for your transaction to complete. And your total fee will then appear in the bottom here. And if you're happy, you can go ahead, review and send. Plus you can also buy. So if you wanted the convenience of buying a new cryptocurrency without leaving the Trezor suite, you can also do so from here. And there's a host of fiat currencies that you can select from the list here. So once you've typed in the amount that you'd like to purchase, you'll then be shown a list of available offers that you can choose from. It will show you the amount that you'll receive by each provider, then display the different payment methods and listing all the fees. Then you can simply go ahead and get this deal. Now this isn't a way that I would personally recommend purchasing your Bitcoin, as you will get better deals by purchasing via an exchange platform. But it is a very convenient way of buying without having to send funds to and from an exchange or having to leave the suite. And there is an exchange and spend coming soon, which may be available by the time that you're watching this recording. Now the final part of our accounts is if we click onto the three dots beside the name of our account. It will then display your account details. And this will provide you things such as your account type and access to your public key, which I'm obviously not going to go through in access right now. So let's head back to the dashboard now and check out the Tor switch. By activating Tor, you can benefit from an anonymized global network that will obscure your connection by relaying it through servers distributed all over the world. And this is great for those who are concerned about sharing identifying data with a third party service or anyone who might be observing their communications. And I have a full tutorial on Tor if you're interested in finding out more. But simply put, when Tor is on, your data is then being encrypted and your IP address is masked. Just be aware though, because your connection is being routed around several connections, along with encryption and decryption, you may find that it isn't as fast as usual. Also, when you have Tor enabled, the offers that we saw over on the Buy tab earlier may not be shown for your correct location. And if you want to complete a purchase, you might need to manually set the exit relay to one located in your country. Now, if we just click on the name of our wallet on the left-hand side of the screen, you have a few different options for your wallet, which will allow you to remember the wallet and eject if you're finished using the suite. So if we click onto the cog on the right hand side of our dashboard here, under general, you can change some of the options such as the language or currency from US dollars to GBP, for example. There's some tour settings in here too, as well as a way to check the version that you're currently on. Now I tried this on the previous version and it didn't actually work for me. But as I said, there are some bugs in here as it's still in beta. And if you want to find out the latest version, you can go back to that landing page and install it. Then you have your device settings, where you can check backups and firmware versions, customize your device and home screen, as well as being able to wipe the memory. Then finally, we have our coins. So we can add from this screen here. And we can also add testnet coins. And these are coins that have no monetary value, but allow you to experiment with various features of the Trezor Suite without any risk. And that completes my walkthrough of the Trezor Suite. 
I think that the suite is great, especially for those Trezor users. It has a clean, very easy to use interface, especially compared to the likes of Ledger Live. And I'll be excited to see the full set of features in the full release in January of 2021. And I hope that you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button, and please do head over to my website at everybithelps.co.uk for more tips, reviews, and step-by-step -step guides. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.